this is Olivia Gunn, and I am on the showroom floor with Apex, and we are at the Panasonic booth about to check out their micro and macro gesture and the eye tracking system that will bring a whole new experience to passengers. We're in the future, so let's check it out. So I'd like to start this demo, Mary, with um, the understanding that when we communicate, we communicate in three main ways, with our arms, our gestures, with our voice, which maybe doesn't work so well in the aircraft, but also with our eyes. So when I'm talking to you, you're looking at me, I know you're listening. I can tell when you're bored. I can tell when you're not bored, right? I can see a lot of things in your eyes. What we're trying to do is figure out how to take those three things and actually marry it into a very um, intriguing user experience in a premium class environment. So how do you take that natural interaction and make it applicable to this environment? So what we've done is we've taken gaze tracking, macro gestures, things like you know Microsoft Connect, and then micro gestures, which is a fairly new technology that allows you to get down to very fine granularity of touch um, and try and pull these into an environment that is a nice, compelling, and intuitive user interaction. So right now what we're doing is we're controlling the menu. We're navigating the menu with our eyes. And then when we want to select something, we've purpose purposefully said let's do a, a big gesture to make sure you really want to select it. Now you could select by blinking, by saying select, other things, but by making a gesture, you know for sure that you have what you want. You know you really want to select it. It's not, inter or not um, inadvertent. So right now we're going through navigating with our eyes, and then when we're done with this, I mean, and actually you can see that you can do on-screen navigation, which we're doing. You can see with the re with the back and all that button, but you can also go off-screen, and we can control lighting. Um, brightness, we can control volume, we can do attendant call, and right now you can see we're looking at the buttons below on the TV. So it's not just on screen, it's off screen as well. The other part of this is how can you make the entire environment come to life, right? And so we have projectors above, um, you can see we're shining down on the floor, but we're also shining onto the tray, and that tray now can be interacted upon by touch, but we're actually, it's not a touch sensitive surface, it's using gesture. It looks like touch, so but it's not. Touch, no. So there's nothing inside the tray. So we project the image onto the tray using micro gesture technologies then. It acts as if it's a touch sensitive device, but it's not. In fact, I bet you probably don't even have to touch it to actually make it take action. You probably have to get within a millimeter or so, or even more. And you can probably adjust that as well if you wanted to. So basically what we're saying is the entire environment now, so, so the hard part is how do you make take these three technologies plus the projectors, put them into an environment that actually is done in a meaningful way. So when you put the right menus in the right place at the right time. So with this technology, you could actually, if you wanted to, have a book. You can move the book around, and you could actually have the projectors follow the book. And you could actually touch the book and use that as remote control if you wanted to. You could portray stuff on that book about what you're reading and, and take action on that and make it do things and throw it to the screen. So the whole environment comes to life not just the inanimate objects. You can use your hand if you want to as a touch control. Shine on your hand and touch that. So. Mm -hmm. This is a real evolution from even what you guys were shown in Hamburg. So you kind of right. Right. This is kind of a, a, um, bringing what we've done the last two years at Apex with the uh, Captain Kirk chairs yeah. Yeah. and then the eye gaze at uh, Hamburg into a more advanced state. So we have infrared transmitters in the front by the display sending in invisible or infrared light onto the face, and what happens is it creates kind of a camera red eye, and so that red eye is being tracked by a webcam. And so the webcam then, based on the, where the eye is looking, it sees those red spots, and it tells you where you're looking. And that's how it tells the system what you're looking at. Pretty straightforward technology, really. The magic's in the software.